Let's talk about the OB model because this forms core understanding um, when we trade Flash, when we trade Zoom. It all comes back down to the OB model and the filters that I've created uh, for them, right? You know, and once we are able to identify an order block and once we've identified that order block, there are certain things that we need to see in order to confirm uh, the order block. And after confirmation of the order block, there are certain points of interest within that order block that are uh, of interest to us, right? And an order block <clears throat> is confirmed once for my uh, filter specifically, it is for a bearish order block, I want to see closes below the most recent down candle range, right? So in this example right here, if we have a series of down candles like we do right here, we've run the highs of the down candle range, and then we have a candle body close through the low of that specific down candle range. For my model, and I've mentioned this before, that a change in the state of delivery for me and my model would be candle body closure below the lows, right? For ICT, it would be a wick through the opening price of the series of up candles that form. For me, it would be a close below. And for, for TCM, TCM guys, it would be um, the order block that forms in liquidity. Specifically, this guy right here, any wicks through or closes through here would be a change in the state of the rate. <clears throat> for me specifically, I would want a close to the most recent down candle range to the left of current price to be closed through, right? Once we do that, we then move on to step two, which is identifying the order block range. Now, I'm neither here nor there as to whether you use wick to wick. My preference uh, would be body to body, but if we were talking wick to wick, then this would be the entire series of candles or the bearish order block that has been confirmed. And if we use in body to body, that would be from here to here to here, right? So number one, identify the order block range. Number two, right? So for number one, identify the OB range. Number two, are there any imbalances inside the range, right? So number two, are there any imbalances inside the range? Gift yes, trade the imbalance, right? These are the filters that I've created. If there are no imbalances, trade open price of that range or mean threshold, right? AKA 50%. Now, <clears throat> these are the main filters that I have put into place for trading an order block uh, range or once you've identified an order block, how we trade them, right? Now, once we've identified the order block range here, we have a change in the state of delivery confirming that structure has now shifted. If there are any imbalances inside the range, you can see in this instance, this is an imbalance right here. I am not concerned with any part of the imbalance that forms outside of the range. So for me, the imbalance would be from the opening price of that range to the high of the imbalance. This is the only portion of price that I'm interested in, right? You can see here, price retraces, taps the order block, and then dies, right? But you would notice that <clears throat> when we play order block ranges, the main function for these that we want to see is the mitigation of the order block range, but more specifically, 
50% of this order block range to be mitigated because there are instances where we do not get 50% of the order block range being mitigated. It then becomes liquidity to be taken at a later point. So when you see them leave the 50% of this order block range unmitigated or untapped, these highs like you see here become trend line liquidity to be taken at a later point, right? So we could use this specific high or these specific highs uh, as something we call inducement, right? But basically what that involves is these are trend line liquidity, right? At some point, they will come back in, tap that 50%, and they'll leave. So always important to be able to identify the order block range, whether we have tapped or mitigated 50% of the order block range, and then we want price to move away. So our ideal entry would then form at 50% of this order block range using all of the filters that we've or I've provided inside here. If there are imbalances in the range, trade the imbalance. If there are no imbalances, trade the opening price or 50%, right? But in most instances, we want 50% of this uh, range to be um, mitigated. So you would have seen me in this specific example mark out the imbalance inside the range right here. You can see that we had mitigation. Let's just extend this out in time. We had mitigation of this um imbalance and 50 percent of the order block range tap right here and then price moves away right so this is basically um a bearish order block range if you want to see how this looks for a bullish order block range it would look something like this right down order block range confirmed retracement into 50 percent and then price starts to push away right so these are the <clears throat> basics of uh, the order block range and the core foundation for how we would trade any order block ranges based on imbalances inside the range, the absences of imbalances, and the mitigation of 50% of this range. Always take note that if they do not mitigate 50% of the range, it always leaves it open to be taken at a later point because of the buildup of trend line liquidity or liquidity above an order block range. That's the best order block range uh, to trade, right? So we would just look for mitigation and then price to reverse or move away, right? So this is a core understanding of order block and order block ranges. And we will get more into uh, market structure and how we use these order block uh, ranges going forward.